Bullshit. Pretend for a moment we've entered a parallel universe free of bullshit and full of bold solutions. That's what the No BS Show is all about. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich. Our guest today is Denise Sansosti of Pure Romance. And I am actually nervous today. So you guys, uh, you're going to enjoy this one. But first, let's cut the bullshit. The Internet obviously has changed the pace of how we communicate, do business, and live our lives. We have a multitude of choices at our disposal, faster communications tools, and the opportunity to do more in less time. Yet many people are stressed out, or so they think. They think they're too busy. I hear the phrase, I'm too busy so often that I'm considering revising the 90s one-hit wonder, I'm too sexy, by making it, I'm too busy. I'm too busy for your call, too busy for your call, too busy by far. I'm too busy for your email, too busy to return your email. Picture that guy doing his dance in that video from the 90s. If we're too busy to return calls or respond to emails, we certainly don't have time for something as old and tired as the written thank you note, right? Actually, no one's too busy to write a few lines on a card and drop it in the mail, and it's safe to say we all appreciate receiving a thank you note. We tend to remember the note and many people even save them. However, most aren't comfortable enough to take the time to write thank you notes. If you wanna make a real impression, express your gratitude in a memorable and personal way, the traditional written thank you note is still your best option. And with minimal preparation, you can make the process smooth and easy, even for those of you who are busier than Obama, which is my phrase for people who are self-obsessed and think they're busy when they're not. Executives, business owners, salespeople, and anyone who works with others on a regular basis should have a supply of thank you cards that are blank on the inside. After that, all you need are stamps and a pen, and you're ready to go. The next step is writing the note. Focus on what the recipient did and how it helped you. Write a few lines in the manner in which you speak. It's more important to be you than to worry about any specific writing style or guidelines. Be genuine and be ready for the recipient to thank you for the thank you. Again, our guest today is Denise Sansosti Troby, National Director for Pure Romance, and she's on the Senior Board of Directors for this multinational worldwide company. Denise, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you very much. Good to be we're, here. We're excited to have you, although I am a bit nervous. So I am too, I'll be gentle with you. Good, thank you, thank you. So we've got a lot to talk about, and some of the stuff we're going to talk about, people are probably not comfortable talking about. But let's start way back early in your career. Walk us through your educational background and your career journey. Well, my educational background. I went to not high school, but I can read and write. And <laughs> thanks for laughing at that, Suzanne. <laughs> You, she you, went to high school with you me. You and Suzanne <laughs> both went to Knock High School. Yes. And I went to, I went to actually computer tech. Remember that in the Fulton building? Yes. Yeah. Went to computer tech for a short spell and then went to Pitt for about two semesters. And that was it. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Had no direction. How to get to work and support myself. So I dropped out of school. And what did I do next? A lot of different jobs. My first job was at the Hotel Saxonburg in Saxonburg. That was in high school when I was 15. Had the best boss ever in my life, Fred Gentile. What made Fred very, uh, such a good boss? Very compassionate man. Very good to all employees. Was not afraid to take off his suit jacket, roll up his $200 shirt, tailored shirt, and wash dishes on a busy night. Knew every single one of his customers. Was very, very personable to everybody. It's made a lasting impact on you. Absolutely. Both of my sisters work there as well, and we all say the same thing. He was the best boss we ever had. So would you consider him a mentor too? I think I was too young at that time to have a mentor. But it was, it was, it was like the first boss you ever had, the first... Uh, job, the first dog, the first pet that you ever had, you compare everything else to that one boss that 
nobody else can compare after that. And it doesn't have to be the first one. It could have been the fifth boss that I had. Yes. But, you know, when you have that good pet, that good employer, you compare everything else to that person. Mm-hmm. So you're at the Hotel Saxonburg, mm-hmm. which we've talked about before the show. Still in business, still doing well. Mm-hmm. You, from what I hear. Haven't been there in many years. Then you, uh, you went to computer tech for a little bit. You got right. Pit for a little and bit. And was waiting on tables during that whole time. Lived out in California for a few months because uh, I had a sister that was out there and just you know, a lot of odd jobs, usually in the service industry, the food service industry. And then I got into office work. My last real job before I had kids was uh, inventory control at a welding wire company, of all things. What kind of inventory <clears throat> control do you do at a welding wire company? <laughs> Purchasing welding wire from across the world uh, in big containers. So that was really interesting to know, uh, that whole aspect of work and industry. And how much welding wire and what kinds of welding wire. You just don't realize how many different kinds of welding wire there are. Just not the kind at Home Depot. You know, the couple little spools of of MIG or TIG wire. I can't believe I still remember that. <laughs> so, so how long were you doing the welding wire inventory? Maybe two or three years. And then I got married, had, uh, got knocked up, and decided to be a stay-at-home mom. And at that point, when I was a stay-at-home mom, uh, I was PTA president. I started teaching preschool because I was one of those mothers that thought the best job in the world is going to be revolving around my kids' schedule, which most mothers feel that way, I guess. I don't know. And that worked out for a little bit. But How many kids? I have two children. Boy, girl? A boy. He is 22, and my daughter is 20. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, mom of the year with everything. Of course I was. And teaching preschool just wasn't making ends meet. And at that time when I was married, we were also flipping homes. So there was a lot of work in construction. And I was a big part of that. Uh, And then I decided to sell Pure Romance because of very good friend of mine said, since all I talk about is sex anyway, I should probably make money at it. <laughs> so what year is this that you decide to do the pure romance? It was 14 years ago. 2002. I'm not, I don't know the math. There yeah, you go. 2002. Okay. <laughs> so you talked about sex, thought about sex a lot, and now you decide to start making money on sex in exactly. 2002. Exactly. And I do not like the party plan business. I really don't. I, if I was one of those women that you invited me to your house for to buy pots and pans or choppers or jewelry, I was not going. I would ignore you or come up with every excuse not to do it because I just didn't like the idea of inviting somebody over to your house so that they can spend money. I didn't like that. If you want a couple bucks, I'll just give it to you out of my pocket. And when I had my first party... I was hooked the whole time I'm sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, I could do that. I could be funnier than her. I could be better than her. I would have said this. I would have said that. And that was it. I was hooked. Tell me what the big idea is behind Pure Romance. And I, I'm not being funny. I want you to tell me what the big idea is of what made you passionate about doing it. So what in one sentence is how you would describe what pulled you to Pure Romance and what it means. What's it the big idea? Well, I don't think that came until later, until I got involved in the company. I think in the very beginning, my big pull was getting out of the house, away from my two small kids and Mm -hmm. my husband, and also making some extra money and actually doing something that was fun because I was around kids 24 hours a day in one way, shape, or form Mm -hmm. between, you know, PTA, preschool, and my own children. I was around children all day and all night. So it was my escapism Mm -hmm. that I just happened to make money at. And then later on, uh, once I became very involved within the company, and their their tagline is education, empower, and entertain. I'm not necessarily sure of that order, but that's the order I'm putting it in. And 
And that is very, you get addicted to helping people. And not just the women at the parties and answering their questions and helping them feel normal, whatever they're going through is normal. Uh, sometimes that's all that women need is a little pat on the back saying, yep, that's totally normal. I know about 20 other women that are going through that. I hear that at every single party. You're normal. You're fine. There's nothing wrong with you. Sometimes that's all they need to hear. And I'm that person to do it. What type of training do you receive when you become in pure romance to become that expert oh, to answer that question? Fantastic training on a corporate level and a personal level. So whenever you become a consultant, your mentor should be that person that signed you up, or you can always find another one if that isn't, you know, if, if it's not a good pairing. And there's tons of online training that the company provides, but then they also have periodical trainings, maybe every other month in a local area, whether it's Cleveland or Pittsburgh, but they do two amazing trainings every single year. One is at, uh, I'm actually leaving next week to go to Orlando, one, and then they have another one in August in Cincinnati where their home office is. And they have professional, motivational speakers, financial advisors, they have uh, oncologists come and speak with us. They have sexual health uh, experts that you see on TV and on Good Morning America. They can come in and they speak with us. You start out and you're getting your first training. Mm -hmm. It's 14 years ago, but think back as best you can. You walk in and what's the first thing they start talking about? What's the well, Beyond would, the selling, I, I know I they're going to train that you the on selling. The company has but. really grown since I started. And when I started, there was really no such thing as social media besides MySpace. Do you even remember that? Yes, I do. <laughs> and you had to physically go out and get business. And I think nowadays people rely on social media for their businesses, regardless of if it's pure romance or anything else. So they really taught us back then. They had uh, people within the company, consultants within the company, teaching us things like that. The motivational and guest speakers didn't come until maybe eight, ten years ago. So the company has really grown, too. They don't do the same thing every year. They, they have grown along with their business, I will say. They have gotten better and better with their trainings. And I totally lost my train of thought. So right there. Let, me, let me help you out. Okay. <laughs> Thank so you. With respect to education, empower, and entertain, mm -hmm. what do they teach you so that you can teach others? Because the psychological aspect plays a role in some of what you're talking about. Well, it's your funny parties. that you mentioned that because it all depends on the consultant. Two people can go in and listen to the same exact thing and not walk away with the same message, the same word. Other people, and this is, a, in my opinion, the whole idea of being in such a personal, personal business and personal in people's, literally in their bedroom and in their fine china and naughty bits. You have to you have to be one on one and not be so sterile with them or not be so salesy to them. I am not I always say to my customers I am the worst salesperson because I will not try to sell you the most expensive thing. I will not get you to spend more money than I think you're capable of financially spending with me. I want to make sure that the items that you go home with, you're actually going to use and not put in a side drawer and never use. So with saying that, I'm more about the empowering and really what their tagline is, and entertainment, of course, because I like to entertain and be funny. But then somebody else might walk away from a training and only get the financial, well, I need to upsell. Well, I need to, you know, if they're getting this, then I need to upsell them to this. And and to me, that's not really what it's 
all about. We have uh, a broad array of listeners, men and women. As a guy, what my perception is that this is, <laughs> I don't know anything about it, so I just keep thinking of uh, old school when Will Ferrell comes in, breaks into, and his wife's there, and there's the party, and he gets beat up by, is it Andy Dick playing the guy who's shown him? Okay. <laughs> That's because I'm clueless on the whole issue. Explain to me what's going on. Is it just We almost a- want you to be clueless. This is why men are not allowed at parties. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> <Are you laughs> men being clueless? Come on. No, we 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 don't. As a consultant, I don't want you to come to a party because, first of all, when there's testosterone in the room and probably a little bit of alcohol, you might become defensive. And I'm not saying you, Dave, but maybe men in general might get a little defensive on tips that I'm trying to give you. So that is why we like to entertain and educate the women because then they can come home and educate their men or their significant other or themselves Um, because there's, (laughs) it's not TV. I'm making hand motions. (laughs) (laughs) There's a lot of power in these right here. Best helping hands are at the end of your own arms. So we want to educate the woman so that she can go home because if a man goes to a store, I know what they do when they go to like the Lions. <laughs> they buy the biggest thing that they can get their hands on. They buy, you know, according to the picture on the box with the pretty girl and look at she has breast, but they're not really paying attention to what's in the box. It's all about the packaging. And that is not necessarily what the wife wants or what the girl wants or what their partner wants. So guys go into stores to buy these things? <laughs> they do. Or and on the internet. Poorly. And they buy poorly. They buy poorly. And they from, buy most from, on the internet. From According to my customers, that's what they say. The internet, you're never sure, you know, how they oh. say, uh, <laughs> picture and mirror, or what is that on your rear? Oh, right. Bigger. I'll just larger and mirror. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm picturing, so guys are ordering this on the internet. They're all excited, thinking they did the right thing. Think they were, which is sweet, oh. which is super sweet, but... It's up to the woman to decide because ultimately she's the one who's going to be she has using all the power it as well. She respect. has all the power and that is, you know, we when, do have when you all, all the power. you figure that out, the world is going to come to That is part of my job men. too. That is part yes. of my job. And that is why I love doing college parties too with the young minds, <laughs> molding them that they have a lot of power. They just don't even know it. They don't know it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dave, do you have another question for me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pondering. My, I have three sons. I feel for them because, you know, you know they're, it's hopeless for men in the, my son's generation. That's not hopeless. It's pretty close. When you keep the woman happy, then everything is happy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, that is the uh, utopia scenario, mm-hmm. looking for unicorns. Mm-hmm. Right. But not only on the sales aspect, to help you out here, Dave, um, but also there is, you know, a whole other aspect of the business that since I have a large team under me, then I'm a manager of sorts. I'm, I'm a manager of a team, a sales force team. What I'm hoping to get to, though, is Go ahead, please tell me. tell me it's not just a primarily a sales training like no. Amway. No, Please tell not me at there's all. some psychological, significant psychological Absolutely. training. Uh, w- and so I think the company no came to No offense to, to Amway, they'll, they'll sue no, no, us. No. Amway yeah, yeah, will yeah. sue me. Amway is a good company. And it is not, a good it's not company. a pyramid scheme. It's been around for a long time. Even though it kind of looks time. that way when you draw it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've had people actually <laughs> contact me. Can you look at our payment plan and tell me what you think? Ours is really cut and dry. I've looked at others, and I can't make heads or tails of it. Mm-hmm. To me, when I see something like that, I'm like, I think you should back away. Mm-hmm. If it's not cut and dry, how you were getting paid, and there, then you need to walk away. But anyway, so no, I, I think the company realized a long time ago that not just how we treat 
customers and people that talk to us, but also ourselves. You will never be successful in any business, especially a sales position where you have to be happy every day that you go out. And most people are not happy every day and happy with their lives. And for most women, this is a part-time job. So for you to work all day and then have to leave at nighttime, you better be happy with your life. You better be in a good, secure place. So we have this man come out. We had him come out for the first time, maybe eight or 10 years ago, probably 10 years ago. Uh, Brian Byro is his name. And he talks for a very long time, uh, which funny story there. The very first time that I heard him, I actually got up and left <laughs> because he talked a little bit too long for me. He was one of those when I, he just, at that point, he wasn't entertaining enough for me. I wasn't understanding the message and I was not in a fantastic place. So I got up and left. What's his theme? What's the title of his talk? He talks about his daughter and swimming. And <laughs> anyway, so at the end, and it's very motivating to break through hardships in your life. And you get this pine board and you're going to come through it. You're going to put on one side right on what you're going to break through in your life. And then on the other side, what you're going to achieve once you break through. And you literally kung fu it, chop it break through this board. And I just thought it was the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen in my life. This is just, I, this isn't my life. I'm great with my life. Da, 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 da. And I remember leaving that, um, meeting training, whatever it was, and calling my husband at the time and telling him there's nothing I would change about my life except you. And I went through the How'd litany of things. Um, well, <laughs> it actually went really well because I realized, oh my, how about that? The only thing I would change about my life is the person that I'm with. Okay. So uh, I had a lot of thinking to do. And then we skipped him for a year or two, uh, Brian, wait, wait, having wait, him at our... He He's on the phone. You're mm -hmm. driving down the road back mm -hmm. from here in the swim. Park. And at this point, I probably consumed a half a fifth of vodka. So you had mm -hmm. some vodka. Mm -hmm. you, you, you cut the board in half at the swim talk and you call your husband. Absolute bullshit. That's right. <laughs> and you yep. tell your husband the, the, the where is your husband when he gets this crushing news? He's at home taking care of the two kids. Does he think you're serious? I yes, he did. So he's devastated. Probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he knows you're going to divorce him. No, not at that point. Okay. No, that didn't come until later. Because it, it took a while. But that was that was a very pinnacle moment where it sunk in. And honestly, that's the whole idea behind Brian's uh, speech is that he wants women to come to the realization in their life. That they're miserable. What, yeah. And that guys are the issue. Mm, no, not all the time. <laughs> no, it could be a job. It could be financial. It could be. And how are, what are you going to do to change it? What are you going to do? So when he came back a couple years later, and what's so funny is that we have him back every year. Every year we have him for the new consultants that join the company because we want them to experience that because it is so powerful. And yeah, but that first time I saw him, I thought it was totally hokey. <laughs> and now I'm a huge believer that every person needs to do that. Mm -hmm. Very powerful for women. You need Let, to go ahead. Let's go down that path mm -hmm. then of, because you've had a couple of instances that you thought something was bullshit. And this is the no BS marketing show with Denise Sensosti of pure romance. So Denise, Give me an example from the past when you just had to say that's BS. It could be a company culture, questionable leadership, or poor work ethic, or anything that you just thought was BS. Well, the funny BS story is that I had a habitual liar on my team one time, and that was really, really difficult. I actually thought about leaving the company because she was so difficult to work with. And it's one of those businesses, even though I am a manager of my team, <laughs> you can't fire somebody. They can't... They 
you can't get fired unless they're stealing from people and you have proof of it and you have so many customers go in and complain about somebody. But I couldn't get rid of her. And I think the most frustrating part is that I knew this about her. I, I figured it out first, but nobody else, even though I was saying, oh my gosh, can you not see which, I mean, crazy, crazy, crazy nutty stories that she was, she was doing. And it took even the company a, a good year or two to realize, oh, okay, Denise is not lying. She, this girl is a nut job. When you say habitual liar, you mean like lying, like John Lovitz on Saturday Night Live. Um, here's here's one. Somebody came up to me one time that was doing a training in her market and said, oh my gosh, your girl went into a diabetic shock. I had to save her. She's not diabetic. <laughs> it was all an act in front of everybody for the attention. Um, I, I hear that she's having brain surgery this month. That's why she, mm, nope, she doesn't have a tumor. What? No. Mm-hmm. Oh, she was crazy. And then she would, she would say things like, um, I confided in you. I told you my most personal, you know, and that's what con artists, they do things like that to, to suck you in. And I would. <laughs> Nobody else. She would lie to people to get them to join the company as to how much money she was making. Boy, that's a bad one. That one made me feel really bad. So um, how did you work around it? What did what steps did you take to try to fix it? I tried to ignore her, which then did affect my business because in ignoring her, I ignored the rest of my team for a while because I I didn't want to play favoritisms or, you know, it's, it's, it's hard when you're working with a group of people, especially when they're women, you know, feelings get hurt and it's, it's hard. And I was, was kind of new at that time with this whole managing of people. And there was a lot of, a lot of learning that I had to do. Um, but I, I, I ignored her <laughs> or tried to, but it's hard to ignore somebody. That is total bullshit to deal with somebody like that. And what was your question? Go ahead. I can tell more bullshit stories. I got all kinds of bullshit stories. Well, let's put you on the spot. Talk about a learning experience <laughs> when maybe you were the BSer. Maybe your communication wasn't what it needed to be. Mm -hmm. Maybe your leadership, your management. Looking back, when do you think you might have been guilty of some BS? I will say that I had a lot of learning to do about three years ago, but actually I didn't learn it until last year that the company blindsided me and I have to be careful what I say because I'm still with them and I totally understand you know I've I learned that I, I probably should have said something at that time instead of ignoring it and letting it fester into something bigger which it did affect my business and there was a train of thought that I just lost uh, but I let something affect me of how somebody how people treated me and as as the result it did affect my business my income and so I learned last year I don't have to like and respect people within my work to get my job done I have to respect me and what I do and enjoy what I do and that's about it it would be like you not having respect or liking the people that work in this building or build it. Who cares? You're just doing your job. Mm -hmm. Do it well and be done and get over it. And I will say that once I had that epiphany and that aha moment, I got my shit together. For two years, though, you were a little bit of a oh. BSer because you kind of avoided uh -huh. fixing yep. it. I did. And so it hurt you emotionally and financially? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Mm-hmm financially is the one that really hurt because I like my money. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, uh, we talk a lot about marketing at Mass Solutions and we're going to see how you go about marketing and that's one of the big reasons you're here. I couldn't wait to answer this question. We talk about marketing being about clearly defining your target markets, finding mm -hmm. out what they want through marketing intel and if you have to, changing it or tweaking it 
so that you can give it to them when and where they want it at a price they're willing to pay and then telling them about it again and again. And my passion is that the vast majority of people focus on that, telling them about it again and again. And it frustrates me because a marketing purist, someone that really understands marketing, knows that you have to clearly define the target audiences and do that marketing intel and be willing to change based on what you learn. So based on what you've heard there, think back to your most amazing moment in your experience with marketing, messaging, or communications. What's your biggest marketing or messaging success? Uh, well, when I read this question, when you first gave it to me, the one thing that came to mind, what was my, the best marketing that I ever did that was truly accidental was moving to a state where I was the very first consultant. <laughs> I was already two years in the business here in Pittsburgh. I moved to Delaware and I was quite honestly, and I know it's a little state, but there's still people there. And I was the very first consultant. So being first to market was a huge advantage. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes, because I 10 years later, I still have a customer base there. Half of my team is there. And it pays to be the first. But now, I, did you do that strategically because of that reason? No, we moved uh, for work my husband at the time's work. So I, I was scared. Oh my gosh. Cause I had a, what I thought was a decent business here in Pittsburgh and I left. I didn't know a single solitary soul didn't know what I was going to do. Didn't know if it was going to fly, had no idea what to expect. And then within literally three months, I had a bigger business than I ever had here in Pittsburgh. And then what, what that brought is since I was the first one, and I will say I had a lot of damage control to do because whoever was in the state before me was apparently stealing everybody's money. They would take customers' money, not give them any product, and then that's it, just leave. So I had a lot of damage control to do and gaining people's trust that I'm not that person. I'm not going to do that to you. And then, and then it just snowballed into a crazy business because I was a one man show. I was busier. I was probably working 18, 20 parties, working 18, 20 nights a month as I was renovating a house and taking care of two kids. I was literally crying. I was crying every other day crying because I was too busy. And so I had to bring people into the business and I never grasped that concept until that moment, even though I knew it was part of the business, I didn't want anything to do with it, but I had to recruit. I had to bring people in because I needed them. I needed the help. So it was completely accidental. And then after two years of living there, I moved back to Pittsburgh and I, think going back to marketing, the company does a lot of marketing for us, but we are our, our own marketing. It's the way you look, the way you dress when you go to work, the way you present yourself with your language, with how you look. I had somebody tell me on Saturday, she was shocked at the way I was dressed when I came in, you know, that I had on nice shoes, I had on a dress, that, you know, I don't, I don't come dressed in fishnet stockings and my high heel hooker shoes like <sighs> that. I reserve for my off time, oh, okay. not while I'm working. <laughs> and she was very, and she said it. So you know, how many people think that, that aren't saying it? She just happened to say, it. I'm like, absolutely. Due, due to the nature of the business. I mean, I am selling sexual enhancements. I, you need to present yourself in a way that is relatable to customers or else they're going to say, mm, no, I, I can't, I can't partake in that. I can't go home with anything. I can't be interested in any of this because somebody that is trashy is interested in this. So I have to look professional. Denise, how can <laughs> listeners contact you if they'd like to learn more about what you do? You mentioned some things earlier, but let's mention, let's close with uh, making sure we get all the contact info out there. Okay. Your website, your Twitter handle, your uh, Periscope, tweet. Instagram, 
uh, Snapchat, Facebook. I am a Facebooker, Denise Troby, or how do you spell that? T R O B E E, or the more difficult maiden name S A N S O S T I. Put up either one, and I will come up. I Instagram under Denise Sansosti or D Sansosti. What else? Denise Do you put any photos up there that are product Trovi. related? No, my Instagram, I do not. My Instagram, because my family is not on Facebook for the most part. So that is how we communicate with pictures is through Instagram. And where's the website for Pure Romance if I, if I did want well, to look at some of these? Well, you can do uh, pureromance.com slash Denise Troby for me. Okay. And my phone number's on there. So I'd be able to find Tickle My Pickle, the, the book, the literary masterpiece. Yes, you would. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's right I'm up there with Get Where You Want to Go, my book. Mm -hmm. You can buy both. We're going to put a special offer. If you want to buy Tickle My Pickle mm -hmm. and Get Where You Want to Go, my book, you can get a combo package. I'll tell you what, you want to buy Tickle My Pickle from Denise. And I will throw in a get where you want to go to okay. anyone that uses it. What, what, what kind of promo can they use so that they can? What's so funny is that my sister, Tosh, she works for a food service industry. And she said, you know, I'm thinking about buy a case of fries and we'll put in one of your books or a vibrator. I'm like, that is genius, Monica. We can totally work together on that. Yes. So if they, so want, can... if they want get where you want to go, they come to, they email you. And they get Tickle My Pickle and Get Where You Want to Go for the price of Tickle My Pickle, which how much is Tickle My Pickle ballpark? $16. $16. So you're getting chock full of information. You're getting marketing. Absolutely. Messaging stuff to help you communicate in the bedroom. How about this? How about they purchase anything? Because maybe somebody doesn't have a male partner and you want something else that That's fair. With, with ever purchase, we will throw in your book. You hear that? You hear that? <laughs> It's going to be in the show notes. Denise, I will say this has been the most interesting and nerve wracking <laughs> show that I've been on. Don't be afraid. It's all about sexual enhancement. <laughs> sexual enhancement. Sexual and whenever enhancement. you say the word penis, you have to lower your voice. Penis and vulva. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the big idea. That is the big idea. Denise, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. I enjoyed to our listeners, thanks for joining us. You've got all kinds of stuff you can do uh, now. So uh, <laughs> visit BoldSolutionsNoBS.com for show notes plus additional marketing, messaging, and sexual resources. Are you signed up for light reading? You'll receive valuable strategies every other week to improve your marketing and transfer your message. It really is light and tend to be read in two minutes or less. And it just might trigger bright ideas for you. To sign up, visit MassSolutions.biz. Remember, ask yourself. What's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold.